Hello, everybody. It's Gatiri. And Owen. And welcome to the Soothsayer's Tea. Today, we will be discussing education, vetting your sources. Yeah. We're going to be talking a little bit about vetting your sources, formal education, the pros and cons when it comes to witchcraft. We're not going to go into that huge, huge topic by itself, but when it comes to witchcraft and the occult and other things. Other things, yes. Other things. Um, we are definitely free-balling this one again. Um, usually we have some subject points, but I find that our episodes are better when we just kind of go bleh and spit it all out. So, yeah. of course, this episode has been inspired by the Hierophant, um, which, again, is kind of traditions, um, orthodoxy. Um, and what comes up a lot for us in our readings is that the Hierophant comes up in higher education. So that's really kind of inspired this episode today. Yeah, I'm very excited. I think this week's Tower Talk was very nice. I love me some higher reference. And I think, (laughs) yes, I love me some elephants. And I think this episode is also going to be great. I have hope for us. And especially because we spent all of last week shitting on Discord and communities. And now we're going to talk about their benefits. (laughs) And how great they are. Uh, This is going to be like the complete opposite of the emperor we're actually going to be quite like gentle and benign we're not going to be inflammatory we're going to be the good aunties this Mm -hmm. time around and we're going to be like okay let's let's make it soft let's let's add some praise because the reality is is that although we have a lot of opinions we also have a lot of almost defending opinions of things that we really do enjoy and we feel are useful to the public Mm -hmm. we're not always extremely negative (laughs) I don't feel like we're negative. I feel like we're just kind of like, nah, nah, bruh, <laughs> nah. I think that you are gaslighting me. <laughs> I You're just like, no, I want to be fighting. bitter. <laughs> I want to be hateful and bitter. And I'm just like, I'm not that hateful and bitter. I want to start a cult. <laughs> <laughs> Cults. All right. This is not a cult episode. No, Honestly, the whole cult not. thing is going to be a joke for a while. Yeah, oh, I, I it. think it's just very entertaining for both of us when one or the other one says, cult! Cult! Yeah, it's like a jump scare. All, right. All <laughs> right, so where do we want to start? Because there's a lot of things to start with. I think, personally, we should start with vetting our sources and how important it is to have sources. Don't yes. just be making shit up. But that's okay, too. And we'll get into that in a second. (laughs) Don't do it, but sometimes it's okay. Um, Yeah, I mean, the thing is, in in today's society, we have so much information at our fingertips with the internet, library systems being better than ever, and all of these other things like ebooks. There's there's a lot of information and it can kind of be information overload. And we understand that when you Google something and 600,000 results come up, that is terrifying, especially if they're giving conflicting answers. But the thing with witchcraft and stuff like this is what you're gonna wanna look at is primary sources. And um, yes, like Pinterest and like these online boards and stuff um, and like forums can be helpful. And these like with communities, they can be helpful. But also, at the end of the day, these people's opinions, you don't know where they came from and you don't know what they've been based off of unless they source their work. So not only is sourcing good for progressing in your practice, but it's also good for giving yourself a little bit more of a name as a reputable reputable person. Yeah. And I think what's important, too, is that we're going to go over UPG, SPG and VPG because these are Mm -hmm. really, really, really big um, acronyms that are massive in pagan circles and none of them are unvalid but you also have to be very clear what it people have to be very clear and you have to understand whatever you're absorbing um, you have to figure out and you have to make sure that you're doing your due diligence to make sure it's not upg spg or vpg so mm-hmm. i just said a lot of like letters and i'm sure somebody's brain is now just scrambled so what we're singing you... the alphabet song yes so <laughs> upg stands for unverified personal gnosis so unverified personal gnosis is basically just that it's a personal experience so if i have experience with a deity that is not recorded in history or antiquity or antiquity sorry 
it's my own unverified personal gnosis. And I cannot, in good conscience, in any way, shape, or form, expect people to take that as law. Yeah, 100%. And the thing that I'd like to talk about a little bit with UPG is that a lot of people will have different sort of definitions of what UPG is. Um, A lot of people will say UPG when what they mean is like their opinion when it comes to something. Um, It is my experience and my opinion about UPG that it has to be gnosis. So like divinely gifted information or experiences. I don't think it can just be like anything. Like I don't think that me liking the smell of rosemary or associating like... um, God, Bridget, for example, with Rosemary, um, if that hasn't been documented in history, that is my opinion. Okay, hold on. <laughs> words. I'm just, uh, yeah, words. Um, that is just something, like, if there's no historical documentation for this, there's no historical association, then that is my opinion. If Bridget comes to me and says, yo, I like Rosemary now, then that is my UPG. That is unverified personal gnosis and it was gnosis it was divinely given or gifted and it was my experience with a divinity or spirit yeah because i feel like a lot of people kind of when it comes to upg they say oh well uh i feel like apollo really likes coffee it's like well did he communicate that with you no i just feel like that's the case or oh i've tried this and it, it it's a thing right not quite it does have to be something like you said kind of divinely integrate it into you and we can kind mm-hmm. of discuss on future episodes exactly how to tell the difference between a divine intervention and not right because guess what nine chances out of ten it's not relax <laughs> yeah let's, a let's lot of realistic. um a lot of experiences that people will have with the deities um will be mundane experiences and that doesn't make them less valid it just doesn't necessarily mean that they are like divinely gifted yeah. or divinely like inspired Exactly. Now, the reason why UPG, again, your unverified personal gnosis um, is important is because we see it a lot with, um, especially with deities, deities that are don't have a whole lot of historical sources on it. You'll find a lot of modern books um, that are just full with the author's personal gnosis, unverified personal gnosis. It's what their personal experience is. And there is validity in that, and you can learn a lot from that, but to take it as gospel is, I don't want you to say dangerous, but it's definitely not going to help you grow. It's not going to help you really do anything because what might be a personal gnosis for something else, someone else will not work for you. Mm -hmm. And the thing about this as well is I kind of want to touch on this a little bit later, is when it's appropriate to share your personal gnosis. Um, like for example, I will completely name and shame this book and this author, um, "Tending Bridget's Frame" by uh, "Tending Bridget's Flame" by Linnea Wellerstone, I think it is, mm-hmm. um, is a book that is entirely the author's UPG, and it is marketed as fact. And the thing is, this person is American and doesn't actually have any or at least any tangible or real connection to Ireland. And so for her to then profit off sort of Irish culture and Irish deities and stuff like that with her own UPG um, is morally a little bit grey, especially because this has become one of the most popular books when it comes to like re- people researching Bridget for the first time. And it is full of UPG, which is not historical, as well as historical inaccuracy. And one of the biggest historical inaccuracy, historical mythological, I'm using those two terms interchangeably, even though I shouldn't be, um, mythological accuracy, I guess, is that she names Namarigna, or the Morrigan, as the mother of Bridget. And that is not true. But you, if you go into online circles, or if you even Google it, I think it's on the Wikipedia and stuff now, um, if you Google who is Bridget's mother, you will see the Morrigan everywhere. Yeah. Um, it- and that is... That is huge misinformation, not true at all. Yeah, especially, let's be realistic, a lot of, um, I call them foot pagans, people who basically came into the faith um, through spiritual means, they're not necessarily educators or academics, Mm -hmm. and there is a need for academics, there's a need for kind of historical research. And when I say historical research, I don't mean sitting on the shitter on Google research, I'm talking like you are 
a you have a master's degree in like history from a university level of research here Mm -hmm. and that goes into because again i named off a lot of different um letters there upg versus spg so spg is shared personal gnosis so this comes into again it's not necessarily a aspect of the craft that is historically recorded someplace but multiple people experience the same aspect of something and again in this context i think we're going to use is it called shared personal gnosis is it shared personal gnosis that's what i was it is called it is no it is shared personal gnosis but i'm just thinking about like this term that we've created it's shared but it's personal (laughs) yeah because again it's still it's still shared personal gnosis but shared personal gnosis is basically when multiple people come up with a the same um type of aspect in independently of each other or they're either they come together and they all start experiencing it at the same time Mm -hmm. um or within their craft they have the same experiences or they are able to follow the steps that the first person took um and experience the same experiences they can replicate the experiences yes and when you do see SPG in books, um, that's going to have an extra step of validity to it, because at that point, you know that it's something that, and again, we're going to speak in the context of deities, but um, you can adjust this to any type of practice that you do, um, whether it's theistic or, theistic or not, that when it comes to a shared um, personal gnosis is that that's going to be a little more accessible because somebody's UPG unverified personal gnosis is going to be extremely personal to them. Where a shared, um, like a shared personal gnosis is going to be a little more open because again, in this case, a deity may be interested in experiencing that with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and as well as that, there are more likely to be resources on it because more people have experienced it. So they're more likely to write it down. Um, <laughs> and the thing is as well with shared personal gnosis is you'll find it for the most part in communities so like this will be either online pagan circles or um, like offline circles like I guess covens if you're a Wiccan yeah. or gatherings and groupings and whatever else you may like to call them exactly and honestly just to finish this off VPG ver- verified personal gnosis that's is historical like accurate depictions uh, or um, experiences Um, for Mm -hmm. example if you somebody associates they're having an experience during their trance work or their spirit work and they're like oh my gosh i feel the sun it's apollo well guess what you probably haven't figured out because it's verified personal gnosis that's a Mm -hmm. god of the sun so verified personal gnosis are things that are aspect of gods that do not change like they will never get out of it and again, I specifically say gods, but in spell work, it could be the same. Like rosemary is very, very clearly a herb of protection. It, it's going to always have that protective um, quality. Same with salt. That's verified personal gnosis because that is ground into its animus forever. It's basically. known internationally throughout multiple different practices. Um, and they experience this, like they experience that yeah exactly like salt is for protection or whatever um people like it's it's universally known it's sort of like a law if that makes sense um but the thing is another thing that you're gonna need to walk out watch out for walk out about okay um is people using these terms are not always going to mean exactly what we are saying here um these are sort of what we have experienced as the most common use of these terms but some people have different definitions of gnosis. Some people are just wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so just just keep an eye out. You can sort of have these terms in your own mind, but don't always be looking for them because as we were saying, like they definitely, there are a lot of books out there and there are a lot of resources out there that are US or VPG and not it's not stated as such. Um, yeah. So this is really just, these are things that you're going to need to keep in your mind, in like the back of your mind and... 
if you can't find any sources on something, it's probably UPG or just like complete bollocks. But like most likely UPG, hopefully. We don't have that many grifters. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. So this is coming into vetting sources. So now that we kind of spit all those num- like those letters out to you, what does it mean? Mm-hmm. You're probably more scared and confused than, uh, than ever before. The thing is, is that it's not enough in the craft or in even in tarot or anything of sort to pick up one book, read it cover to cover and be like, I'm done. It doesn't work that way because you cannot get everything you need from one book. You can find a book that is going to explain things to you that you're going to connect to. That's really going to hit you in a certain way, but you're not going to be able to really deeply understand what you're studying unless you get your nose into the books honestly and that Mm -hmm. comes into the craft i say the craft or just being a practitioner no matter what you choose to learn it's so vast even just minor subjects are very very fast vast because we're looking at almost like world religions here we're looking at folk religions we're looking at those connections and it does take research and when again when i say research i don't mean online ways because those are often intended to be quick and easy for clicks i think you have to get into the books online ways are good just not tumblr blogs because like with online stuff like obviously we have like online libraries jstor yes yes, yes. i should yeah i should make it clearer i mean like social media Mm -hmm. it's not going to be it's not going to be sourced enough to be able to give you a deeper understanding of what you're trying to study. It's going to give you a surface understanding. And I think this is where people can come off as gatekeeping when they're not intending to. It's not that people are trying to gatekeep you. It's that there's just more information that people can learn before you have a better understanding of things. And I feel like a lot of people, and I have experienced this, that when you're the only person in your friend group that's into these things, you can almost get this false sense of um, of superiority. Superiority is not the right term, but I think that mm. you end up not knowing what you don't know because you're already in that position where you know more than everybody around you, but that's still just surface level understanding. I think we discussed this before where I said that although we're very experienced, we're still learning just about tarot. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't think I will ever stop learning, to be honest, because even every time I'll be repeating the same prayer, the same spell, whatever, 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 for years. And it's something that I've been doing all my life. And it's something that people in my family have done. And it's very, like, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years old. And I will do it. And I will get the same result as everyone else has got. But there might be something new. There might be a new energy or a new feeling or a new way that this spell has worked um, or this prayer. And that is the end of my train of thought, apparently. Yeah, I, we get what you're saying. I think yeah. what's important is that I'm going to use tarot because, again, that's what we do. Tarot is something that, again, you can't just pick up a book, dust your hands off and be like, we're done with this. It's something that you constantly have to research and look into. And when it comes to what I mean by vetting sources or what we mean by that, it's not so much Googling to see, because one thing you should be doing is Googling to see if these people are full of shit, these authors, because you'll usually find some dissenting opinions. And those like dissenting opinions are important because you want to read them subjectively. Because when you do read these reviews of these some of these books, um, sometimes you'll read books like, I just don't understand, or I was confused, or this wasn't good enough for me. Obviously, those you don't have to pay attention to. But if you see long kind of thought out, like reviews, pay attention to them. That does not mean that that book is useless to you. If anything, I think that the book is just as useful because you can read an opinion that's different than yours and find out where the connections are do you agree with that opinion do you see another side of that opinion within reason and we're not talking about like books that are like neo-nazi bullshit i'm talking about just like regular stuff but if you find something that you might not necessarily subscribe to 
understanding the other side so you can understand where you got to your stance is also important. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because when you are able to do that, when you're able to objectively look at the opposite side or the like differing opinions work and compare it to your own, you're also in a way able to defend yourself and defend your stance and prove your point to yourself. And for me, when I am, or like for me, at least when I am reading something that I don't agree with, all it sort of does is reinforce what I believe in because I'm like, yeah, okay. So I'm not, obviously I have found what works for me. I don't need to do this. I don't agree that this doesn't work for me, but because I know what does work for me, I can tell people why this thing doesn't work for me. Yeah. And I think that's also in the spirit of tarot in general, it's like we have dissenting opinions on how to read different cards, right? Yeah. And we both respect that. I can be like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, absolutely. It can be read that way. I'll never read it that way. Doesn't mean that <laughs> your way or the way that you're doing it is wrong is it, by any means. Within reason, there's some people that might pull out the tower card and be like, oh my God, that means you're going to fall in love next week. I'm like, please. But I'm talking like... you can Reading have, reversals, for example. Reading reversals, right? Like, absolutely. I have many arguments against it. Um, however... I'm not against people doing it in any way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. If anything, I want people to do read reversals. So I'm like, Phew, smarter than me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, I do read reversals. Similarly, I have my arguments as to why I read reversals. And what's really great about this is both of us are right. Yeah. Yeah. At and the same that's time. okay. Yeah especially in pagan circles or the craft circles, practitioner circles, is that some of these practices can very wildly differ from each other and still be valid. Um, Again, within reason, we don't want any focusum or anything of the sort. There is some things that you do need to very loudly speak up against, but for the most part, um, there is a lot of things kind of overlap. I think the only thing that I am going to really speak out against um, personally because again just what i've looked into would be again anything that has racism or sexist um, rhetoric in it um and then a lot of new age thought um star seeds and all that um until you can give me evidence that you know (laughs) it's not anti-semitic racist and based in stolen practices then yeah then we can talk um because i have a lot of evidence um otherwise and Trust me, I've looked into their arguments for it and it, none of it's holding water. Um, I think I've made a comment on one of the discords that we uh, moderate um, that Starcy is just um, the Tumblr version of Scientology. Oh my God. I remember this. Yes. I don't, I don't even disagree, to be honest. I think that like, the, I, I, I won't go as far to say that the New Age is a cult, but I will say that a lot of New Age thought and New Age practitioners are acting very culty yeah and we already went on about that so in context of this is that these are dangers that you have to be aware of so proper research is important and when we mean proper research honestly you don't even have to go as far as constantly reading books 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 i think that finding a safe and proper community online community specifically is important and Frankly, you're not going to find it on any social media website that prioritizes clicks and views. So YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, anything that is phishing or basically attention is currency. Those are not the type of websites you're going to get proper information from. Yeah, because the thing is, at the end of the day, the misinformation is what's most exciting. Because what the people do is they will dramatize things and they will lie about things and they will make things seem more extravagant than they are because that gets them clicks and views. And of course, obviously, there are good um, like people out there who are actually sharing good information and getting to the top of the views, like Chaotic Witch Hunt and stuff. Like people yes. like this, they are sharing good information. They're just making it entertaining. But the thing is... For a lot of the part, a lot of the time, it's not going to be good information 
Um, but it will be entertaining. Like, it's fun to watch. Like, I will sit there and I will scroll through Witch Talk for hours, but I'm not going to be taking any of that and putting it into my practice because I know that a lot of it is, like, kind of made up. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. BS. It's just, it's, it's, it's pretty. And I don't want to, like, devalue aesthetics in the craft because there's definitely interpretation. I think, like, there's quite this misconception that um, if something's aesthetic or beautiful on, like, your Instagram feed, it's not working or it's just for show when that is not necessarily the case either like in co- the concept of like beauty or aesthetics can also be considered like a gift from the divine so that yes. is why it's still magical and it's so perfect but it's it's just also very visually pleasing things can be both there yeah. just aren't always yeah and i think that comes into it's a, it's for me it's less about the creators um that are on the social media platforms um atari which is one is fantastic like i can name off all these fantastic fantastic creators it's less about them and more about the algorithms forcing you into those cd back alleys once you start viewing these people um mm-hmm. i'm thinking in my mind let's just say um against somebody's woo. brand new yeah yeah woo could go on about that but like, i'm thinking in a more general sense let's talk about tarot because um, we understand it. So we just kind of take a piss out of it and we kind of laugh at it. But I'm thinking if I'm brand new to tarot and I don't know anything and I follow a tarot creator and it's fantastic. And I go to the explore page and now the explore page is full of grift and I don't know any different or better. That's going to be my influence now. Yeah, 100%. I think a lot of these algorithms and stuff are predatory in that way and that they will... Because, well, we see it all the time. We see it with scam Instagram accounts and we see it with actual, like, grifters. What people are doing is they're not sharing their sources because they don't have any. Or they're saying, I'm above sharing sources and they're claiming some sort of, um like, hereditary component. Like, I don't need to share a source because I was told this directly from the words of my Romani grandmother. And it's yeah. like, okay, sure, but sources and also you can't use like being hereditary as an excuse to get out of things, especially when realistically, when you speak to those communities, they aren't just sharing this stuff online for random people to see. I was about to say that you can tell right off the bat that's bullshit because the fact that they're sharing it, if it's hereditary, then why are you not sharing it with your crotch goblin? Yeah. Why are you sharing it? Why are you grifting on the internet for it? Because it's bullshit, bud. That's exactly what it is. So anytime somebody's like, I'm going to tell you something and it's it's only told to me because I'm hereditary, they are 100% full of cock shit because I have hereditary practices that I would never share to anybody except for my blood because it's hereditary, you dumb fucks. Like, come on. <laughs> Sorry, I yeah. had a moment there. <laughs> but that's where you can tell right there that it's grift. But going back into grift itself like we see it on again i'm we've experienced this where people like oh my gosh like the tiktok readings like just i love them i I always wait every day for a tiktok reading and i claim my reading and it's just like i get to a point of course i can get mad about the people who are doing these tiktoks but i want to look at these people and like do you understand how tarot works obviously not and that's okay it's not your fault it's the fault of this application forcing you to watch these videos look at these posts because it gets the company more clicks yeah um and i mean i think we can then sort of branch into how like this like getting an actual education in huh that came out very much wrong um (laughs) that we can talk about like how you don't need an actual education to be sharing this information um but what you do need is to be aware of the people who are going to try and overtake you by sharing false information yeah and before i want to get into that is that um community wise because this is a bit of a segue into finding um very open but kind of insular communities um discord is the number one place i recommend because you will find communities there is ones you do have to avoid but any generally medium-sized community anybody with a couple uh, like a thousand or more people is generally going to have a really strong moderator base that's going to kind of keep all the bullshit out if they're Mm -hmm. worth their weight and salt and you would know 
Uh, usually you'd wa- uh, walk in there and there's a rule list as long as your arm. <laughs> right (laughs) if you see the rules and you have to like you know get your reading glasses out to read over over them and then you have to type in all these passwords to be able to get into the community if it's gated you know it's correct (laughs) yeah for the most part definitely (laughs) would agree the thing you need to watch out for then is how um those rules are enforced um because if mods are coming in and they're saying stuff like well if, if one of the rules for example is uh, don't like argue with people but you can disagree with respectfully um, that is fair but then if that rule only applies when the person you're disagreeing with is a mod then um, you're going to want to watch out you're going to want to maybe a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're going to want to leave that server maybe because that is a little bit that's a little bit crazy like when mods go I guess mad with power or whatever um, it's probably time to head out yeah but that's again we, we discussed that last episode so i don't want to yeah. scare people away from discord because a lot of discords that we moderate are like in the thousand plus mark and we have really good um like we have events um we have discussion panels we talk about things people ask questions they get answered by people of all different um, walks and faiths um it's really really good because you can start asking questions look um, for diverse discords yeah diverse discords yeah. don't just go towards like hmm, i'm gonna go right for you know a um i'm trying to think of a the one that we're not attached to um like, <laughs> you know, do a, a wiccan there you go like a wiccan on um, discord right um i find if you were starting out go with a diverse one and kind of go from there because you might have wiccans heathens um you're gonna have hellenistic practitioners you have irish practitioners you're gonna have a bunch of pra- different practitioners there that's going to kind of open up your worldview a little bit and you yeah. kind of go from there and any um server worth its weight in salt if you check the pins there's going to be a ton of pin resources there from sources that the community trusts and that way you can kind of know that everything's got to um, vote there is a discord that i am going to shout out a little bit it's the library of mysteries where they just just strictly talk about books and they review books and they discuss books and they basically like, hey, this is the best book on the subject. And it's not, they're, trust me, they're not paid in any way, shape, or form. These are people who just No, they love. are not. Trust me, they are absolutely vicious on books sometimes. And it's good. It's good to get it, that dissenting opinion on things. There's so many books out there that I thought I was going to get. And after reading their opinions on them, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't. Um, there's books that I never thought to pick up. But I've picked up mm-hmm. and it has exponentially increased my like my knowledge, my comfort and my craft, making sure you're finding good communities is honestly has been the keystone in my practice. Yeah. And the thing as well, honestly, about the library mysteries and um, what I really, really like it, because there are a lot of sort of like occult library discord servers out there, but they share illegal PDFs. Yeah. And while I have, I think it's sort of a moral gray area I am personally against the pirating of small authors' work, especially when I have a lot of friends, actually, who are authors in the occult community, and they don't make shit from books because it's such a small niche community. Like, there aren't getting, like, five billion copies sold or anything like that because there aren't five billion people wanting to read this niche subject. They're writing about this purely from the good of their heart. And... Ari, the Ari the Oak Witch on YouTube, um, is the creator of the Library Mysteries, and I'm friends with her, and she's great. So there's yeah. that too. That's and my I'm, vote of confidence. Yeah, the, the, it's a, and honestly, it's not even a massive server. It has like 500 people on there, but it, it's perfect. It's a great, mm-hmm. great resource. And this is it what also we mean doesn't is... like blacklist books. Sorry, I really wanted to mention that quickly. Yeah, because for sure. I forgot a second ago. Um, yeah. They will tell you that you shouldn't read a book, but they're not going to tell you that you can't read the book. Yeah, they'll tell you not to read a book in a way is be like, don't waste your time. (laughs) Yeah, because it sucks. It's like, don't read this. It is just insanely racist and useless. And you're like, okay, well, yeah, that's fair enough. Um, It's but like they won't like blacklist a book, if that makes sense, because they disagree with it on like because it doesn't align with their UPG. And again, that comes into sometimes reading those books are important. So you can argue against those points as well. Because I find that 
if you are arguing against somebody who's a focused, right? For example, if you already know what's in their playbook, they're not going to win that argument because you're never going to be caught off guard by the stuff they're saying because you already know what they're thinking because you mm-hmm. already have basically educated yourself on their the rhetoric, insanity. the insanity. So that mm-hmm. is where it's important, especially if you are taking any type of stance in the community to actually know your enemy. Yeah, this is true too. Um, just don't go promoting those books, honestly. No, please don't. And that comes into, I would never pro- promote it. There's books that I've read that I would never, ever, ever, ever promote in any way, shape, or form. Um, even to say, like, you don't, um, like, out of nowhere saying you don't read it, if what it came mm-hmm. up, I would be like, absolutely don't read this. Um, but again, which by Lisa Lister, I was about to say that. I was not going <laughs> to say that. I did not want to say that book because it sucks so bad. Yeah. Um, but that's an example. It's like, I don't even want to mention these books. I don't want to give it any attention. I really don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even though there are books that we fervently hate, I will occasionally, if there's a book that I completely cannot stand, completely disagree with, I will occasionally drop its name because I don't have any problem if the author hears it, basically. Like, if I have, like, slightly dislike a book, I'm not going to start, like, railing on it because I still agree that it has, like, its good parts and I don't want to offend the author who put all this hard work and time into it. However, Witch by Lisa Lister, Tending Bridget's Flame by Lilina Weatherstone, um, I don't care how much effort or work either of you put into those books because they are horrible. They are vile and they should be burned. So when it comes to Tending Bridget's Flame, it's just wrong. It's a problem yeah. with it. And when it comes to Witch by um, Lisa Lister, um, it is blatantly, unapologetically transphobic. So fuck that book. Yeah. To be clear, don't you don't you don't need to read that book. Uh, there are there it, it it's not even it doesn't even have good information past the transphobia. It's literally just a book that was written from like Instagram posts, um, and then with an added like the added added extra of transphobia and tra- like it was oh, not a good book. Yeah, but again, we can go on. Um, but you did put step on a little bit the next kind of subject we wanted to talk about, which is not needing any formal formal or hereditary education. Yeah, this is I'm excited one. about this one. Um, yeah, the thing is, you will see online or in movies or whatever and stuff like that. Pop culture in general will tell you that you need to be like born a witch or you need to go to a witch school. Um. And the thing is, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, speaking of transphobia, at the end of the day, um, (laughs) the, it's not necessary. It's not needed. Even if you go to like witch schools, I guess, can sort of be beneficial. Um, But at the end of the day, whoever is running or creating that school is going to be biased towards some things and not other things. And they're not going to have all the knowledge in the world. So from the very beginning, it's going to be a flawed practice um, you're because you're really going to getting one side of something like, yes, you can teach things comprehensively, but it's it's not really something that can be learned like that. It's there's like witchcraft in general. And I'm speaking very vaguely here because I'm talking about everything um, that encompasses sort of folk witchcraft because it's so intuitive by nature. Yeah, folk. So, and that's the thing. This can be a little bit kind of. This is a nuanced topic for sure, because folk craft, mm-hmm. no, you do not need a witch school. Like you you just don't need a witch school. You can, I don't want to say, like you can just get some books, start a practice. That's fine. The only quote unquote exception I would make to a quote unquote witch school would be something that is um, initiatory. Um, things like, um, we're talking like ceremonial, like, covens and um like freemasonry is an example mm-hmm. something that you'd have to be initiated in that's less of a school and more of like a fraternity type um practice there yeah. are some practices where you have to be initiated into um a, a teaching yeah a teaching of some sort voodoo mm-hmm. is a good example of this if we want to talk a little more on the witchy side voodoo mm-hmm. is very much so an initiatory thing where you actually have to be taught by a mentor and on a, I'm going to frankly say this by a black mentor, please. Um, so mm-hmm. that comes into a few different, it's a little nuanced, but if we're talking in the grand scheme of things, because I'm 
likely the people listening to the podcast um, are going to be like electric um, practitioners, like or which which is people who are interested in it because of the kind of push in social media right now. Um, you don't need a witch school. You just yeah, don't. <laughs> you don't. Um, fun fact about witch schools. <laughs> um, I think it's Amsterdam University or the University of Amsterdam has the only, um, it's the only university to offer a specialization in Western esotericism as a um, degree, I believe. So uh... you can study Western esotericism at the University of Amsterdam if anyone wants to hop on that. I am very um, erect because I would love to actually, <laughs> just for listen, the academic study of it, just the academic listen, side. It'd be so cool. What's up? I am sort of doing it right now. I mean, like I'm not obviously studying esotericism, but I am studying religious studies um, and it is very cool. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Um, however, you don't need any of these things. I was whatever I am today, whatever my practice is today long before I started studying religious studies and I will still be long afterwards um the thing is you don't need these things they're just cool to have you can study academic religion and academic esotericism and mysticism outside of an academic setting like I sure do you don't need this formal education you can educate yourself the resources are there yeah, because we do see it a lot. Um, I know there's one called Hecate, or I don't say Hecate because I'm the wrong way to say it f- for them. Um, it's just Hecate's Finishing and they really <laughs> call themselves the online school for like traditional like witchcraft. And I'm looking at it, and it literally looks like, um, it just looks like clip arty. It looks like it was made with um, stock photos, and yeah um this is what we mean by these witchcraft schools um Mm -hmm. honestly their information is going to be extremely basic and honestly it's probably going to be just an extension of tumblr information really yeah you're not like look there are some people that learn better with direction and with a mentor you can do that um if you but you are gonna have to do a little bit of your own research first and the thing is at the end of the day learning to research by yourself and on your own is going to be a huge skill not just when it comes to developing your spiritual practice, but in your like work life as well. Like it's a great skill to have to be able to read and research and understand academic texts. Um, now, of course, not everyone is going to be able to do that. Not everyone's going to be able to read. Not everyone's going to be able to process um, the academic language. And that is cool. That is okay. I am sort of one of those people. And the thing is, what's cool about that is audiobooks and this really cool website called summary.com, but it's spelled summary without the vowels. So it's www.smmry.com. And if you copy and paste any link to an academic article or a book into that website, it will give you a synopsis. It will summarize that information down into whoever many lines you want it to be. And what I like to do is I like to do this and then I like to read the summary that summary.com has given me and then go and read the big long paper to get all sort of fill in all the gaps. But because I have this sort of start, because I already have this pre-knowledge that I've just gained from the summary, it makes it so much easier and it's so much less overwhelming. This is going to be maybe a little bit of a hot take as well. Um, You don't have to like study or frankly absorb every word of these academic resources as well. I would think Mm -hmm. it's important to just read them honestly scan your eyes over that when i say read it i mean like just read it um there's a book that i have which is hakate soretta by um sarah isles johnson which is a big old thick academic book do you think i sit there and read it to myself as a bedtime story no i have went through that book and when i say skim through i don't mean skim through like i've taken like an hour to read it i read it very quickly And I will occasionally go back to it. But just that hour of going through this really thick, very heady, very, again, heavy academic study has grown my practice and my relationship with Kate significantly. You don't have to go overboard with it or you don't have to be intimidated by these types of books. Just going through them is often enough to be able to get a better understanding of what you're 
trying to study. You don't have to actually, when we say study, I don't mean like sitting down with notebooks and a computer like you are studying for a test. There's no test that you're not going to get quizzed at the end of this. Mm -hmm. You're just reading this information for your own personal development and your own personal, personal like growth. And you don't have to win at it, but it's yeah. what it's very important is to just read it and don't be scared of it. Just and read the thing it. Is, yeah, exactly. And uh, cause the thing is at the end of the day, these huge long academic texts, if you skim that book 17 times over four years, you will most likely absorb quite a lot of information from it. And the thing is, there's no time limit to your practice. You don't need to have everything done and know absolutely everything by the end of the year because that sort of defeats the purpose. Like a lot of a lot of occult philosophies are about constant like learning and education and continuing forward with this forward momentum of developing your practice. It's about developing your practice because the end is sort of inconceivable because you can always be doing better. And so you never will reach the end. And so if you are forcing yourself to trudge and sludge through all of these academic papers and all of these texts, you're just going to burn yourself out and you're not going to enjoy your spiritual practice anymore, which is kind of silly. Don't do yeah. that. My favorite part about these academic books is that and these classical studies is that somebody else already did the work for me. <laughs> I ain't yeah. really writing it. I ain't um, studying. Exactly. It. I'm not doing a quiz on this. I could just, I just have to skim through it and read it. Unfortunately, I am doing a quiz on this, so I don't have <laughs> to do this. Um, well, you, on the other hand. <laughs> but uh, I am a very special case, okay? <laughs> don't be like me, kids. <laughs> now, I do want to discuss on, like, on the concept of tarot, too, and kind of properly studying that, because um, I like using websites for quick references. But when it comes to... If you're very serious about tarot, because I hear it often, people are like, I'm so serious about tarot. And they couldn't even tell me who Pamela Smith is. Like, who? Shut, <laughs> <laughs> Shut your hole. Shut your hole. Right? Imagine saying, like, I don't know, The Wizard of Oz is your most favorite movie at all time, but you have no idea who, like, who played Dorothy. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me to not having these massive gaps in knowledge. If you are interested in something, and maybe that's just my personality, because no matter what it is, whether it's tarot or my practice or fucking Dragon Ball Z, if I get interested in something, I need to know everything about it. I will go on the internet and I will search things and I will learn the background behind things, how it was created. You're a nerd. I'm a nerd about everything. And it's not just this. <laughs> if I'm interested in like, What's the dangers of drinking rainwater? I'm going to spend an hour looking into it. So if you're interested in something, you need to be willing to look into it. Yeah, that's the thing. And like, it's not always going to be fun. You're not always going to be interested. But the thing is, a lot of this information we need. Do you think I want to sit there and read through awful, uh, like, very very awful translations of old irish into middle irish into modern irish um for me to then semi translate it into english do you think i want to read these things because it's fun it brings me joy because i can guarantee you it does not it's something that i care about deeply and that i'm passionate about but oh my god is it boring <laughs> all right and for me anything i'm interested in is not boring to me but the reason why it's important is that there's a lot of practices that are old, um, especially in a lot of the spiritual practices. Um, they're actually not that old. Um, I'm saying this, like when I say old, I mean, not that old because they came in like the 1930s, 1940s. Well, also it was around the 1930s, 40s and 50s. Racism, lots of it. So a plentiful, lot of, plentiful of things. And a lot of uh, spiritual, like, um, circles kind of have roots in some really nasty things and it's not that you can't subscribe to some of these things now but to know these histories so you do come across these bad actors that is trying to revive certain things a good example would be some like heathens which use heathenry as basically a way to bolster their racism 
And we see that, unfortunately, a lot. It's a absolute sin because I have heathens that are absolutely fantastic anti-racial people. Anti-racist people, sorry. <laughs> Racial people. Anti-racist people. But the, <laughs> the point I'm trying to get at is that if you don't know the background behind things, then you're not going to know what's wrong. Yeah, if you don't know what to look for, the little dog whistles and signs to look out for when people are explaining their theology to you, then you're not really going to know. Basically, you're just not going to know. And you could end up falling victim to this yourself. And like a really, really huge thing with this, and we still see it all the time, is when people talk about blood and your blood carrying your power. Um, Because the thing is, at the end of the day, what they're trying to say (laughs) is that your race um, or like what, like your blood is more important. Your blood is more important than a spiritual connection or something like that. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought here, but what I'm trying to say is that people are saying stuff like, oh, races, like root races, for example, when they have like races in tears and it's basically like it's telling you how powerful you are based on your blood or the color of your skin yeah. or any other feature about you, um, then that is, that is overtly racist and it's, it's not great. Yeah. And we can kind of go into, again, right now we're kind of just like telling the children, but uh, another example of things that are a little benign, but are just kind of shifting into more um, positive and more inclusive spaces is just tarot in general. Tarot is very traditionally gendered, very gendered. And there has been a movement towards like clearing the tarot and kind of moving away from those very gendered spaces. Um, It's things like that because before you can break the rules, you have to know what rules you're breaking, right? Mm -hmm. And when we say it's gendered, I don't mean just because there's boys and girls everywhere. I mean, like there's actually very much so the divine feminine and divine masculine in every one of these cards, which we're probably going to discuss on the lovers feature episode about the divine gender and what that means. Mm -hmm. But it's things like that, that are to a certain extent, cert kind of benign, but knowing, understanding what that means and understanding the background and understanding the occult meanings behind things allows you to kind of break away from that because it's not just as simple as, changing the genders on certain cards and then again dusting off your hands being like i did my part what more rules are you breaking there do you know what rules you're breaking are you breaking them effectively are you actually breaking chains are you just putting boobs on a masculine card yeah because the thing is at the end of the day and we will talk about this as you said when we cover the lovers but divine gender and the divine concept of gender or should I say the concept of divine gender is not the same as the concept of human gender. And that is my opinion based on what I've read and what I've studied. Um, You are allowed, of course, to disagree with me, but I will stand very firmly on that. Divine gender and human gender are completely separated. Yeah. And again, we'll definitely dip into that. But I think what's uh, most important is that you can't break rules unless you know what rules you're breaking. Yeah. Because sometimes you're just breaking rules and you just sound like a fucking dumbass instead of actually. Because <laughs> like if you're going to break a rule and we see it all the time, we're like, hey, can you explain that to people? Well, it's just like, I just don't like it. Or I just don't agree with it. It's like, okay, but why don't you do it? I just don't. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing bitterness <laughs> and negativity from the bitch who claimed to be all positive last week. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, what does it mean? No, I think it's very important to just honestly, I, I can't just say it enough. I enjoy this stuff. I like being a nerd about these things, which is funny because people are like, oh my god, like, all the stuff that you're into is so cool. I'm like, no, it's not. It's not cool at all. It's really nerdy. Like, no, <laughs> it's nerdy. And I know that you might think it's not nerdy. It's nerdy, man. It's hella nerdy. No, I 100% agree. Like, the looks from people that I get when I'm like, oh yeah, I like tarot. I like the occult. I'm into these things. And they're, it's like the equivalent of, like, 20 years ago being like, yeah, I like anime. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Like yeah. I'm just like going on about Pope Joan and I'm just like, dude, <laughs> like just because he's begging, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
right? Like allow yourself to be nerdy about this stuff. Um, and I think that's another kind of pitfall about people kind of looking into the craft and looking into like the occult. Um, the occult's not cool. I mean, like maybe it is the people on the outside, but when you're in it, I'm just like, man, no, we're just spooky nerds, man. We're just spooky, spooky nerds. nerds. <laughs> spooky nerds is that that's just the end of it. And allow yourself to be a spooky nerd and mm-hmm. be nerdy about this stuff. Like, I'm sure you know everything about Grey's Anatomy, left, right, and center. You know everything. Listen, there was no need for the attack, <laughs> the recorded on air attack on me, myself, and my personality. I get enough shit for people for watching Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I don't need it from you too, okay? <laughs> Why do I feel like I hit a nerve? Did I just grab a little nerve, just yank on a little bit? <laughs> but no, seriously, like, let's even think about sports fan. Like, go to, like, a friggin', like, a stadium. They paint their face. They cosplay as their favorite player. And they sit there and they scream and they get really nerdy about stats, man. Like, I'm listen. once again <laughs> sensing some resentment towards sports fans. <laughs> no, I'm a sports fan. I'm just saying, I'm like, dude, it's all everything that everybody does is nerdy, and that's okay. Be nerdy. Being the hierophant is knowing that you're nerdy and being okay with it because you don't care. Not even being okay with it, loving it. Mm, yeah. Loving every moment. And with that, I don't think I've got anything else to add. What about you? No, I think we're good. I think that we tried to be nice about this one, but we still went like Rit! a little bit, but it's okay. I think I think that there is a part of my personality that refuses to let me get through an episode without being at least a little bit bitchy. I'm just naturally a catty person. <laughs> I think that we should just re- like rename this from the soothsayer. Well, we did call it the soothsayer's tea. We knew exactly this was going to be like little tea yeah. time where we're the just going to complain there. about things. Yeah. Let's be realistic. It's in the name. We knew what this was going to be. We were trying. We knew to be- what you were getting into. <laughs> we were trying to be classy, but it just didn't work. Mm-hmm. And with that, I have been Owen Kylock. You can find me on twitter instagram and i've deleted my tiktok so you won't find me there but you will also find me running the soothsayers t twitter which is at soothsayers underscore t and um, everything will be linked in the description below including the link tree to the podcast and both of our personal link trees where you can go to our websites and support us by buying tower readings Yes, and this is Kateri with Binoxis. You'll find me on binoxis.net where you can purchase a tarot reading from myself. Um, you can also see me on Instagram, regretfully Facebook. Um, not so much on Twitter. I just can't get uh, be arsed. When it comes to the Suceris T Instagram, that is myself. That's Suceris underscore T. Come see me, and I'm sure we will hear, listen to you in the future. You'll listen to us. Somebody will be listening to somebody. <laughs> exactly our dms are also open if you would like to ask us some questions or yell at us whichever we can handle it if you yell at us though do be prepared for one of us to yell back because as you can tell we are very much not going to be roll over and take it kind of people (laughs) actually not really if i'm online i'd be like that's nice dear see for me yeah no for somebody for me to yell at somebody i'd have to respect them Okay. And with that, goodbye, everybody. (laughs) We will see you on Monday. Good luck. Bye. Bye.